Uncle Laurie here with another shave. It's uh, Sunday, Sunday the, what is it, 27th, that's right, 27th. And it's exactly four weeks to Christmas, for those who don't know. So I've got a little bit of a Christmas thing today. You might have seen that by the intro picture I had. And it's a 345 soap called a uh, snow cat and it's a lovely oh very chocolatey maybe no not chocolate um peppermint peppermint is what i get from this uh, like a uh, what do you call them a peppermint cream a christmas pe peppermint cream it actually looks like a chocolate cream it's the first time I've actually used a 345 soap and it feels pretty hard actually. Pretty firm. So we'll give that a shot in a minute. The brush we're using comes from Yaki. Yaki brush. Came with this sort of barbershop Christmas theme. And it's got a Sinbad knot in there, 24mm. Put that in the, in the soaker and we're going with the same razor we've been using all week which is the Yaki Melon Head Razor with a uh, blue sword blade from Lord on its third use and that's it and we'll go to the leathering station and make the leather. We've got a two and a half gram sample here, which I'll squash into the bottom. It's, yeah, once you scoop it out, it's a, it's not as hard as I, as the top is. Just spread it out. As people say, I've heard good things about this stuff. I'll see how it goes. Give it a squeeze and a shake. And uh, we'll get started. The bowl I'm using is a Yaki Ceramic Juke. Whether you can see in the overhead shot, we've got this sort of tan, not tan, um, brownish coloured soap. Form colour is the name I'm looking for. Looks pretty good. Some water, my syringe. Add five mil to start with. Nope. Lovely peppermint scent coming off. Like I said, it smells like a a mint. You call them peppermint uh, chocolate. Even though there's no chocolate in it, there is a bit of vanilla, I believe. Supposed to be some fur, I don't get the fur. Getting 
plenty of leather from this two and a half grams. bubbles over there but they won't affect the leather. Beautiful. Down the back. So still going with the Lucky Tiger Vanishing Green for pre-shave. This re-moisting, moisturizing Scent coming up there, or at least a over medium. Uh, it's called the Trinity Base, I think, from 345. I'll just put the uh, ingredient list and the same profile down here for your perusal. As you can see by the ingredient list, there's a heap of oils and butters in there. So we get a lovely, rich, creamy leather. It's not white, it's more of a fawn colour. I don't know whether it shows up on the camera. <clears throat> Alright, first pass. With the schlock. As I mentioned before, the schlock was invented in the mid 40s, 1940s that is. And originally it was only produced for probably only the 40s. Before it re-emerged, um, I think BAA started the, uh, the new shocks. Then Razor Rock and Yaki. They might even be the same one. The Razor Rock and the Yaki might be the same one. Four weeks to Christmas. And being a Christmas fan, the Match Girl. Remember the Match Girl? Well, this is not a story of the match girl. It's a story of the matches. In 1826, John Walker, an English pharmacist from um, 
Stockton on the Trees invented the, the first practical strike anywhere friction match. He first sold them in the 7th of April 1827. Though he, he didn't um, get a pattern for them. He made them from uh, three inch splints of wood, tipped with potassium chloride, antimony sulfide, and gum arabic. The, uh, the head was ignited by drawing it across a folded fine glass paper. And then in 1829, a similar matches called Lucifer matches were sold throughout London. The difference being sulphur and phosphorus were added to aid combustion across the grain. Now, pure phosphorus is dangerous. Not only will it mm, instantaneous combust, but it's also poisonous. So many matchmakers in their factories got sick. Itchy nose. And yet the matches were kept being made until early part of the 20th century. So far, so good. Now this melon head is quite a mild razor. So it takes at least three passes for me to get it down. A two days growth. So what they did, um, the phosphorus was eventually banned in most countries, and as a consequence, a, a phosphorus sequestered sulfide replaced the deadly white phosphorus. Which was called, sometimes called red phosphorus. But the straight phosphorus net matches were the more popular. Until I got banned. So they invented, uh, the safety matches were invented um, back in the mid 1800s. And it relied on um, the actual paper you were striking the match on to be 
combustible with the chemical on the matchstick which was uh, the matchstick had oh, I can't remember the name I didn't write it down phosphorus chloride I think it is yeah phosphorus chloride And it reacted with the, the red phosphorus sesquis uh, sulfide <laughs> to uh, create a flame. Sorry for all those chemists, I'm butchering the names. The word match derives from the French word Mecher, referring to the wick of a candle. And was used, the name was used to describe um, the, the wick used to um, light um, well, cannons and, and guns. They used to, the uh, muskets used to have uh, a wick that was permanently lit and so they used to have a string of wick running down behind them with a permanent fire on it and that, would, and that was used to light the, the powder. And they were called matches. Sort of a touch up, uh, fourth pass type of thing. Glass is off to get underneath at a proper angle. Plenty of residual on this soap. Lovely feel on the skin. Lovely, oh lovely. Plenty of residual. Lovely smooth feel on the residual. I would classify this as a top soap, top tier soap for me. Now the history of matches goes 
on and on. I'm like, <laughs> I don't have time to go through it. Nor do I remember it all. You can just look it up on Wikipedia. And while you're at it, give Wikipedia a little donation to keep them going. Just a couple of bucks is fine. See, this is a mild razor, so takes a little bit extra in there, some areas to get get it down. But that's fine. That's beautiful shave. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely feel on the skin. Mmm. My hands just gliding still over the face. No resistance. Lovely. Top stuff. Alright, we'll, we'll um, rinse that off. Or some of it. Don't think I made any weepers. Give it the Allen test. Just a couple of tingles around the neck. Around the mouth, a couple of tingles. No more than a one out of ten. That's pretty normal. Lovely shave. As usual, I'll grab the, the huge amount of leftover leather. And put that on my face. Might have made it a little bit wet. That's all right. I'll see you after my shower. Lovely, lovely shave. Skin feels lovely. Smooth. BBS on the cheeks. Damn fine shave around the neck. It's pretty normal. Okay, let's get straight into the post shave. Which is all with my normal uh, menthol crystals. Tea tree oil and peppermint again. Ah, oh, lovely. Another Christmassy scented splash. <laughs> and we'll go with the Lucky Tiger vanishing cream, a bit of eucalyptus and Menthol again. Yeah, that's what I smell menthol mostly. A little bit of eucalyptus. But it's not, not a strong menthol. That's nice. Put a little bit on my head to cool it off. What's next? And finally green blue stratus. A little bit of fougere, a little bit of fern. Oh. 
a Christmas memory. Now in Australia, we don't have snow Christmas, we have sand. <laughs> Surf, sea and sand. It's my memory of Christmas. For the summer holidays, we come with. Anyway, we'll see you on my next show. Cheers. <laughs>